What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Brutally Speaking Podcast, the official podcast of MetalNexus.net, where you can get all your show reviews, concert photos, and so much more. With me, as always, is Daniel Terry. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. I don't have a cold. I know in the last couple of episodes I've had a cold, and that's gone. I'm breathing easy. Well, you know, I guess now you're in the uh, normal phase of having a child, instead of being all frantic and worried and all that kind of shit dude it's like my fourth kid so like i'm really not that worried about it (laughs) uh this episode's guest though is uh britain bond of wage war he returns uh for a longer chat this time uh than just kind of the informal uh sonic temple festival interview we did uh, a couple months ago at this point i mean that that nickelback loving so-and-so i I don't even know hey man we we both uh shared some love for the back I got nothing bad to say about the back. Last episode, you know, it was circle back. Now we're talking about nickel back. It's the and, month of uh, the back. Yeah, you know, I guess uh, who who should we have on next uh, to continue on this back series? Comeback kid. Oh, that's a good one. I was thinking BB Mac, but that, that's not really a back at all. Backstreet Boys. Yeah, yeah that's, I'll let that's my good. wife. Do, I'll let my wife do the interview. Oh man, no way, dude. I would. Ha- I would. I probably could bullshit my way through a Backstreet Boys interview. I'll let you know what I'll let you and my wife do the interview. She's home more than I am. How come your first two singles were basically the exact same beat? Did you think we wouldn't notice? My question is: is like their, their biggest, their first big single was like Backstreet's Back, and I was like, back from back from what? I mean, it's almost like Alien Ant Farm with their anthology <laughs> as their first record. You have, you have, you guys have one album. It's an anthology. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, though, speaking of uh, records and all that kind of stuff, Wage War just put out their uh, most recent record, Pressure, and uh, I really enjoy this record. Uh, I know I sent it to you when I got the link uh, about a week or so before it came out, and you know, a lot of fans were... It seems like this has kind of split a lot of fans. Uh, I think the best way to kind of have put it, uh, if you were a longtime Wage War fan, was uh, there's someone on my Facebook feed uh, when the record came out. He's like, this record sucks. It's like 2 of 10. Like The rest is garbage. That's why they put Low and, and one of the other singles out first to get people excited to buy the record and check it out, Put you know, pad their numbers and so forth. What a fucking letdown. This band's canceled. Like All this kind of shit. I was like, God damn, dude. And then, like, a week later, he's like, okay, so I may have, like, jumped the gun. This record's, like, 8 of 10, really great. I see what they're doing. I kind of, you know, the songs grew on me. Really great hooks, really great production, all this kind of stuff. Everything I kind of said in the interview. But the thing that I kind of was latching on to when I saw that is, and, and I'll prose this to you, do you think when it comes to this this internet world we live in now or just this culture we live in that people just don't give anything a fair shake they don't sit with anything for more than just the initial reaction just so they can hurry up and be the first to comment on something and then probably more people will just go oh well that's how they feel yeah me too i feel that way too like i don't think anyone really sits especially with music sits with anything to really sit there and go you know, I, I thought I didn't like this, but then after, you know, the second or third time listening to it or sitting with it for a month, I realized, like, what the band was doing and the growth on it that I, I just didn't notice at first because of it wasn't the last record or it wasn't the first record where I found the band. And I think we're all guilty of that, but I think that's kind of the interesting thing. And it's kind of juxtaposed because I was thinking about that, too, in regards to something, you know, when the comments from the brian head welch thing kind of going i saw a lot of people you know making the comment that you know i didn't like the path of totality when it first came out but now all these years later and seeing how bands have kind of slowly been introducing you know edm and electronic music into what they're doing it's actually not as bad as i thought it was it's not great but there's more songs that I like and can tolerate more now. And it got you to be able to have better use of those mixed influences on the paradigm shift. And that kind of made me think and look more at what wage war was doing and going on with their fans. And it kind of made me wonder, do you think that's kind of where we're at? Is just people are in such a fucking hurry to, to be the first to comment on something. Yeah. And I think that, you know, this holds true and people have been saying this ever since MySpace was a thing. Because anybody can have a band and have a have a, a product put out immediately worldwide on a social media platform or you know YouTube or, or or whatever or you know all the streaming services now, I think people listen to like the first minute and that's whenever they make their their decision as to whether they like something or not. Which is like, can you imagine doing that with something like the Beatles? 
or <laughs> or like Led Zeppelin or something like th- those are bands that are classic bands that have gone in so many different directions uh, or even Black Sabbath you know like it, it, so it's kind of a dumb mindset to have and it's weird with the Wage War record specifically I had kind of an opposite effect in that the, so the first time I two times listened to the record I was like I like this this is cool I'm enjoying the music a- as I work you know as I drive you know I, I, I like it like overall i like it it's a good feeling it's a good vibe i get when i'm listening to it which should be all that matters oh man but then podcaster dan started creeping up (laughs) and and thinking like well i can't just tell people that i like the record what will happen to my ratings and my billions of dollars i make from doing these podcasts what will people think if this record's not a commercial success and i didn't say anything about it so i'll say this Wage War definitely does not reinvent the wheel on this album. (laughs) But you know what? I listened to it like two or three times and had a great time listening to it. And I still listen to it. And I still have a great time listening to it. And I also had the benefit of hearing this interview. (laughs) You know, so I, I had it all in context. And all I can really say about it is that, like, they did a great job at what they did. Like, there's something to be said about, like, like yeah, we can we can talk about innovative bands all we want. But at the same time, like, innovative bands are cool, but they're few and far between. But everybody's looking for innovation or they're looking for something weird that they've never heard before. But there's something to be said about a band that plays a specific style. In Wage Wars' case, it's Metalcore. But they do it really well, and they they incorporate more like hard rock, like radio rock influences into the music, which, again, I had this interview to kind of help me with that context. And normally it's easy to just scream sell out or, or whatever, but, like, do you, I mean, what do you want? Do you, do you want a band that is playing music that is, like, so out there you can't relate to it? Or do you want a band that is just super, super heavy but also super generic? Or do you want a band that was like, we're going to take this style of metalcore, we're going to influence some like more more radio rock influences into it so that more people might check out the style overall and give it more of a fair shake? Like, like what do you want? Like, like, metal fans are so unpleasable, so it's like, there are tons of bands out there that if you just want like a straight blast beat breakdown fest, you can have that. And Wage War can do all of that stuff. They, they have done it in the past. They're still doing it now. But they're crafting songs better than they've ever crafted them before. Like actual actual songs that, that, that stick with you over time. And that that's what I pulled from this record the most, is that there they was a very sincere effort to be like, look, look at how well we've mastered what we do. And I, and I, and I don't think that a lot of bands anymore get credit for that. People just are expecting it to be some weird out there thing. And the problem with weird out there stuff is like, yes, yeah, sure, some stuff that you hear that's like that is innovative, but a lot of it's really gimmicky. So, like, that, that's all I have to say really about it is that, like, this was a great record by a band that has honed their skills. Um, it's the same conversation we've had about a Treyu like a thousand times. You know, um, it just it just works for them, and I, I enjoyed the record. And at the end of the day, if I listen to it, and I'm like, I like this. That That's all they really have to do for me. And speaking of all that we have to do for you, let's go ahead and get into my conversation with Britton Bond of Wage War, and we'll uh, talk to you all afterwards. <laughs> So the pleasure of talking with Britain of Wage War this afternoon, whose newest album, Pressure, is coming out this Friday via Fearless Records. Uh, it's been a little while since we last talked over at Sonic Temple Festival, which I gotta say, um, holy shit, that set was uh, really good. Uh, when listening to this record this weekend, uh, my wife goes, didn't we catch their set? It was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I go, yeah, yeah, yeah we did. She goes, that was a really yep. good set. Uh, so, I really appreciate it, man. Um, how was that set for you guys? Uh, we loved it, man. Uh, we love playing any uh, Wimmer Festival. Oops. Oh, so sorry. I just nope, burst. that's <laughs> dude. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, any, any of the uh, Wimmer Festivals is so much fun for us. Um, this is our second year doing them, and uh, it, it's an absolute blast. Like I, I can't even. I, 
Honestly, I think it's probably funner than Warped Tour, if I'm being honest. Wow, that's a uh, high high praise. The other thing that was kind of interesting about that set too is I feel like it seemed like you know back from where I was because we were trying to go to uh, something uh, like one of those acousticy things that was going on as well. So we watched most of your set while waiting in line for that, and from a distance, it looked like you had probably one of the bigger uh crowds at that point in the day for that stage and i feel like you guys really set the tone for kind of the heavier bands to come you know with kill switch engage mashuga and so forth what does it kind of feel like to kind of feel like you are now at that level on a, a festival like that where you're kind of setting everyone up and kind of amping up the the energy level uh for some of these bigger names that have been around for a long time i mean it it felt so amazing um if it's the same day, I, I remember watching like Bear Tooth, and then yeah. later later in the day, uh, Meshuga. I was just like, "Wow, I really get to play with with a lot of my heroes," and, I, and it, I, that's so huge for us. You know, a couple of the guys had to fly out for a wedding. Yeah, I remember that. that. Day. <laughs> yeah, that day. But oh man, just like sitting there, like watching, watching. It's actually a really fun funny story. I was sitting there. Um, Right next to Caleb from Beartooth, and we were watching Meshuggah, man. Uh, they melted our faces. And I, such a realization of just being like, oh my God, like I get to play with the greats. So <laughs> it was a. Uh... It was an interesting amalgamation of people and genres and all that kind of stuff. I think in our conversation we had, I just kind of was making the comment to you guys, you know, about how a band like you guys may not typically get in front of a Meshuggah fan or a fan of Beartooth or whatever, but it somehow works because of the the, the cross section of uh, genres and so forth, how everyone kind of blurs. And I think that's something that Danny Wimmerfest actually do a really good job of is kind of blurring the lines of what anything is. And it's not necessarily like, Ooh, is it metalcore? Is it gent? Is it, you know, whatever it's just, does it, is it, is it rock music? And does it make you feel something? And that I think yeah. is something that is really interesting. That was my first Danny Wimmerfest. That was one of my first festivals of that size ever. And that was something I took away from it where you could have someone like Amigo, the devil, who's kind of a folky, you know, indie kind of artist to you guys to, you know, bear to ghost to, you know, anything and everything in between. And I thought it was really cool. And like I said, it was really awesome to see, you guys are almost like the popping off point for that day of the festival, it seemed to me. And so I, I just kind of wanted to know if it felt like that to you. Uh, absolutely, man. That, that that crowd was just super fun. Um, you know, it, it, it's really cool to, to be a band that, like, kind of sets it off sometimes. So, um, yeah, for that festival, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I felt the crowd. I think the crowd had a good time. Um, I had a great time. <laughs> So I, I saw some of my favorite bands in the world. So, yeah, that was a great day. Uh, all of that aside, you know, we're not here to talk about something that happened, you know, three or four months ago at this point. Um, your newest album. Uh, as I said earlier, my wife and I jammed it when we uh, took a little uh, weekend getaway this week, this past weekend. Uh, and holy shit, uh, this record far exceeded yeah, you uh, like it? any expectations I had for it. I had high expectations from the two singles you had dropped. But once I finally kind of got to really take it in, from start to finish, I think you guys put out a really great record. Um, something that really stood out to me the first couple of times in listening to it is, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like there was a lot of emphasis put on strong vocal melodies for this record, especially. Um, I, I think that like kind of comes with us as a whole as a band. I, dude, we, don't, we do not listen to metal 24-7 at all. Um, Most people do. We have a lot of... <laughs> Yeah, we have a lot of pop country, like just pop music, things like that. And we're just like, you know what? Let's take that formula and let's throw it in metal and see what happens. And I think that was a great thing to do. Because, um, this record made me grow as a vocalist. I, it made Cody grow. It made, it made everyone grow in the band of just trying new things. And I think it, that's, you know, that that's the cool thing we did. What are some of the vocalists uh, outside of what people may assume is the realm that you're drawing inspiration from that you apply to this as far as maybe outside the box ideas? Um, God, that's such a hard question. Um, uh, oh man. Well, cause like what's interesting to me and sorry to cut you off is like, you know, you look at a band like Siler is, uh, so like Siler is interesting to me. Like my wife 
<laughs> is always making the comment. She goes, I wish the clean vocalist, even though that Jaden does a lot of you know singing now or whatever, she was like, I wish the other guy was just the main vocalist because he's got a more interesting voice. It sounds more R&B influenced, which, you know, straight up they've said that's exactly what his contribution is, is that he has a completely different style and he draws more from hip hop and R&B. You know, I think that's what gives them an interesting dynamic on some of their on their newest record. And, you know, I listen to a lot of hip hop, R&B and a lot of other stuff that's not metal. Um, I mean, I love metal and, you know, things like that. But it's like you can only listen to the genre for so long and then eventually you're like, I need something different. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think I think on this record uh, on pressure. Um, yeah, we, we're really an R&B, things like that. But uh, we're my my actual voice comes from is God, I hate to say it, but this is, this is my realm and that's, that's how I sing it. But, uh, it's, it's more of that, uh, nineties kind of, or early two thousands rock, like Nickelback and, uh, three days grace, things like that. And, um, I'm not ashamed of it, but nothing that, to be that, ashamed of. Voice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I love those bands. If you don't like them, then, well, you're Dude, missing out. I have said for so. the longest time, Nickelback actually, outside of the singles that have been beaten to death, have some fucking I rippers on their records. I and love that band. They absolutely. They are like the, they are them and like a Papa Roach are kind of like those bands that a lot of people slag on. But it's like they have, they're able to do so much. They're able to like have monster riffing songs and just flat out bangers, but then have like the nice like mid tempo kind of song and ballads and everything oh, yeah. in between. And it's like. What's not to like? You're if it makes you feel something, then fuck it. Like play it. Who cares? Exactly, man. Yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. Same way. Um, something else, you know, I kind of loved about this record was the the flow of the record itself. I mean, sometimes I feel like bands kind of get into the trappings of either front loading a record or putting all of the same kind of songs, you know, together. Like, oh, here's all of our ballads. We're gonna put it in the middle of the record. All like, slower songs, all three of them, back to back to back. And you guys didn't do that, and I feel like it really complements the record and the music very well and allows for a more uh, diverse listening experience because you can listen to the record on repeat and it doesn't feel stale after a, a cycle or two. How much attention was paid to the track listing on this? It was actually very organic. We were like, let's make this album a roller coaster ride. I mean, it, it goes from um, who I am to prison straight yeah prison's a heavy track and then um goes in the grave and it just kind of throws you all over the place and then it really ends with one of my favorite songs on the album uh will we ever learn and um it, it, it it's it's just a roller coaster ride something i i <laughs> i got to say going from low to uh me against myself i mean that's that's got to be your next single right yeah there already is. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we yeah, we put that one out, man. <laughs> it's all good. I get, I don't know. I, I sometimes like with a lot of the stuff, I just am so inundated with like prepping for interviews. I don't see a lot of shit, but it, it does the 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 record in two days. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, but uh, on top of that, that that is just a monster fucking song. I mean, what was it like when you guys were writing that? Like, did was there kind of like a an it feeling? Like this is there's something here. This is like huge. Um, I, I think with that song, it was just, um, forgive me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that was one of those that Cody kind of had an idea and, um, he kind of brought it to light and, uh, Drew Folk, the guy we worked with, uh, he was so amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to go on a tangent for him for sure. For a second. That's yeah. Fine. Uh, I mean, he, yeah, he made me like challenge myself, do all these cool things. And then. With Cody as a writer, a really good writer, he's a writer too. So they they were just kind of like going neck and neck, like what what's the best thing we can write? And I feel like that song, um, it's so good for people. The, the lyrics, like everything, I I feel like that's more of a feeler on the album, and I I'm really proud of that song. I mean, <laughs> you should be. It's a uh... It's instantly ear candy. Like as soon as you hear like the first chorus, you're like, "I got that." Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. You know, you've kind of touched on a handful of things already that I kind of want to touch on. So we're gonna just kind of go with the flow of it. Um, you know, in general, with songs like "Hurt" or uh, "Me Against Myself," you know, I definitely can see those like you know being on Octane, being on Sirius, and so forth. 
Uh, is it kind of interesting to think about when you when you've completed the record and you're handing it in and you're you're thinking about singles and and all these kind of things that now you're kind of probably more on the serious spectrum where you can kind of be like, yeah, I think this could be an octane song that, you know, would kind of be able to play against, you know, alongside a Nickelback or a, you know, a three days gray song or whatever. Is it kind of interesting to kind of be at that point with this record, especially? Yeah, it's very interesting actually with management and, uh, with the record label, like everyone's so over the place. Like everyone's like, Oh, I like this song. I like this song. And I'm just like, what? I like this song, you know? Um, yeah, everyone's so over the place, which I'm so excited. I'm like, okay, then that that means that everyone likes songs. But like, um, I do know a couple of people love "Take the Fight." I know people like uh, "Fury," oh, things like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yo, you like "Fury"? I mean, I was driving like I was getting mad because uh, I was just getting stuck in front of every slow person ever today on my way home, and then that song yeah. came on, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna honestly. That's that's the sleeper on the album. Like you, that's the sleeper. You uh, think I? I don't know. Oh, I, absolutely. I, 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 everyone I've talked to, they're like, yeah, that's probably the the weakest song in the album, and everyone loves. Fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's awesome. Is I feel like we got a complete record. So, um, that's kind of what I was saying though. Is I think this record does a really good job because you have a song like Fury that's tucked in the back part of the record. But it brings mm-hmm. the energy and brings it back. Like if I mean that to me would probably be most people's first or second song on a record, typically. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm going to be honest. I hated that song in the beginning, but I love it now because uh, of um, we kind of came back to it. I'm like, what can I do better? And I came. Back, yeah, I had some time with uh, Drew later later in the year. Like, okay, I'm going to come back to some of these songs and see what I can do better. And we've absolutely just revamped that song, and I think it's amazing now. What uh, you know, with a song like that, because I mean, I, I can't help. I mean, just being you know, basically a, a hardcore kid in my early, early twenties and late teens and so forth. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no problem with that. Fury is a song where I just see that being on the back of a shitload of merch. Um, I haven't thought that far, but <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Um, you know, you kind of talked about Grave, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think based on what I could kind of tell from the record, the singing, uh, that's you, uh, doing all the clean singing on that one, right? Yeah, mostly, and then the only part is, uh, with Cody talking about, um, the, the bridge, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, mostly it's me, and then Cody and the bridge, and then it, it's all of us. Did you have the plan to do that all along when you got the music initially, or was there a demo version where that was not how you approached the vocals for that? Absolutely not. Um, I kind of walked into this just very blind. Um, I know Cody and Seth worked with a couple guys with Drew, and I was just like, okay. Uh, but but the thing is, though, prior to that, I, I've been practicing my, my craft and and singing more and everything like that and then when grave arrived um when they wrote it that day i was just like i got this i i I 100 percent got this so what has been since we've talked about some of the reactions other people have had to these songs what has been the reaction to that one from people when you play it uh we haven't played it yet it's coming out two days from now so (laughs) i guess i mean for like your friends and so forth that have heard it or whatever that might be like oh that's you like are they taking a bath yeah 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 Yeah, they're very proud of me they're like wow Britton, you actually like took the next step and just just not become a metal guy you can be anything you want to be and um that that felt good and i and i practice every day i'm singing every day things like that and um it's great. It makes me feel amazing that I can just be more than just a heavy metal vocalist at at some points. And, and you know, I'm always going to be a heavy heavy metal guy in my band. But you know, it, it's it's kind of cool to like dive into some different things. You know, maybe it, it maybe not even be a big thing, but like I'm in the car and I can like hit a note where Mariah Carey hits it with my girlfriend or something. It feels cool. So. <laughs> Does this, 
I mean, obviously, I know this record is done and all that kind of stuff, and I don't know if there was a lot of extra material that didn't make this record. But does a song like this and and kind of being able to tackle a song like this vocally, does it have you excited to kind of maybe venture into more melodic territory for you as a vocalist? Absolutely. I mean, um, I'm being honest. I, I I've, I've been screaming heavy metals for so long i'm I'm ready for a new challenge and I, and I think that this will be really good for me it'll make me grow as a vocalist and uh i, I yeah yeah i don't I don't know if I have any more for this but uh yeah i th- I think I'm gonna grow bigger as a front man just trying these new things it did make me wonder if this ends up making its way into the set. Is this going to be something you put toward the front where your voice is still kind of, you know, full and <laughs> good to go? Or are you going to try to push it uh, back and, uh, you know, kind of end the set with a bang and kind of, you know, go for a little bit of a higher vocal range? Um, I, I'm being honest. This, this is not me bragging on myself. But, man, I, I'm telling you right now, my 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 pipes are iron. And uh, when it, if it comes to the end of the set, it's it's still there. Um, I've been taking care of my voice really well through Melissa Cross and uh, Mama Jan. She's a uh, she's based out of Georgia. She's on people like Drake and Justin Bieber. They really taught me how to take care of my voice. I, it's it's definitely something I always think is funny when when uh, people put a set list together and they're like, you know, I think Miles Kennedy I think was talking about it on one of the old, other podcasts I listened to, and he was like. Yeah, you know, sometimes they'll put like a song where I'm like, man, you're really making me stretch right out the gate. Uh, that's usually like a, a song five or six where I'm kind of like right in the pocket. Uh, or, you know, like at the very end, they'll put songs and really make me like have to work for it at the very end, too. Or it's like usually that's where you're you're kind of coasting toward the finish line. So it's just something I was thinking about as I was listening to that song and thinking about if it ends up making its way into the set. Like, you know, are you going to be th- more thoughtful of trying to give your, your voice uh, the best placement for some of these kind of songs and so forth absolutely and i know a lot of guys that are in the scene that play songs perfectly but um um i i guess we'll see on, on this new headliner what what i do but i'm pretty i'm very confident that i'm going to be fine on anywhere any song is you know you talked about working with drew folk earlier and I mean, that dude's pretty interesting. He's worked with a, a, an interesting cross-section of artists, you know, ranging from, you know, stuff like with you guys to, I think he worked with Little Peep and, you know, kind of has been all over the, the spectrum musically. What uh, what drew you to work with him? No pun intended. Uh, what drew you to work with him? And what is, I mean, obviously you kind of touched on some of the challenges or how he challenged you and the band, but what are some other intangibles that working with him kind of brought out on this record that maybe we can hear? First of all, I think it's, um, he's such a good writer. He he is the guy. Um, another thing is that Wage War did not want to make another just standard medical record, which Deadweight was sick. I mean, Blueprints were cool, but we we're like, okay, this is our third record. Do we step out of the box or do we just stay safe? And we stepped out of the box because Drew is such a good writer. And um, yeah, that, that's something. We had just like writing days. Sometimes they were, they were duds, and then there was some days where like, oh my god, I think we're onto something, and that's where like a lot of songs came on this record. Um, he's an amazing, amazing writer, but um, he's very comfortable to be around, uh, and that's a weird thing to talk about. You're like, oh, okay, you're doing a record, but. I'm telling you right now, if if you don't just kind of like mesh with someone, even like vocally recording, um, it can be very, very weird. But uh, I, I felt like I knew him for my whole life, and um, yeah, he he, he pulled he pulled really good things out of me. Something you've said a couple of times throughout this this chat, and something I think is interesting because I feel like it's sort of become a dirty word or, or taboo in the music industry. Is you know you've talked about Drew writing with you guys, you've talked about Cody writing stuff, you've talked about I think and correct me if I'm wrong. You said that there were other songwriters as well that were involved in this process. Absolutely. Why? Why it does it seem like admitting that you are having people help create the best output that you can as a as a collective? 
why does it seem like that's such a, a dirty thing and, and a stigma that's like, oh, well, you guys are taking the easy way or you don't write your own songs, as opposed to being like, no, we got in a room with other people and created the best songs that we could. I, I mean, that, that, that's a really weird one. Um, I, mean, I mean, do you want to be... The, the My big thing is, do you want to be the same band over and over and over? Or do you want to throw a, a kind of wrench in the program and, and be something else? Um, wage War is Wage War, and I... And I and those people did not write our songs at all. But a, a new perspective is pretty sick sometimes. And um, and I, and I think that's why this record's so sick. No, for sure. I think, uh, you know, I was talking with uh, Nick from New Year's Day, and they were talking about how, you know, they, they're very open and, and transparent about working with other songwriters. But, you know, they deal with people that work in the pop and so forth realm and, the, you know, kind of trying to tackle rock and metal from a completely different perspective and that's what kind of gives them you know as they said like a different sound than what you're typically hearing because they have people who are more focused on you know something i think you guys did actually on uh me and my, me against myself that i've learned about in the last six months or so is this thing called the millennium whoop i think is what it's called uh it's it's well, kind what, of what's that it's i think it's and i might have the phrase wrong but i read about this uh on some some music site a long time ago, earlier this year i think it's called like the millennium whoop and it's basically like what you guys are doing in the <laughs> chorus uh of me against myself like what you're doing with the alone you know it kind of has a uh ascending descending kind of thing but that yeah. thing that you're hearing constantly now in a lot of pop music I guess that's what it's called, and a lot of people are using it, and I guess because it's kind of an earworm and it's catchy and so forth, that I, I think I had read that that's what it was becoming affectionately referred to. And so I kind of wondered, you know, with all these pop people who are probably paying attention to trends and so forth, uh, if that was, you know, something that, you know, I've been noticing has been slowly making its way into, you know, you know yeah. kind of heavier music and so forth. But I think it works because it, it's such an interesting dichotomy against the aggressiveness of what you guys are also putting against it honestly i think i think pop music like is so sick that it's working its way in the metal which is so weird that it's taken this long with, with bands like siler like they have the coolest courses bear Two, things like that um you know we all grew up as britney spears fans we all grew up as backstreet boys in sync like all those fans and it's just so weird that it's like taking this long to be like, okay, I kind of want to make a pop country or like a actual pop chorus with metal. Well, I mean, the I, I don't know. I think it's funny. Caleb is a really great example. For as much shit as Attack Attack gets, I think for a lot of the things that they were doing, they were so far ahead of their time for using like, being one that. of the first to do just out of nowhere left field like super clean choruses using auto tune obviously but then going into the most crushing breakdown ever to weird piano-y kind of interludes and so forth i mean there are a lot of bands kind of doing that before them but i think they were one of the few that just threw it all together where it didn't sound like complete shit and i think a lot of people obviously slag on them for being crab core doing whatever but i mean it's like you look at every band that spurned out of that band. I mean, look at Bill Murray, you look at, uh, Beartooth, obviously look at, uh, what, uh, Austin did with, uh, of mice and men and so forth. I mean, it's like, there's obviously talented people in that band. That, that was the growing period of like everyone. I mean, um, I mean like bands like a day to remember already had, they were already on their path, but I feel like that even just skyrocketed them way further with attack attack uh i mean skites airplane like that's a throwback mm, but um, oh yeah 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 but but does everyone just flourish during that time um kind of slowly and wrapping up you know we are two days away from the record coming out at this point yep what uh what's going through your mind right now uh leading up to this record i'm, I'm excited i just want people to hear it and and, and see that how much wage wars progress but we're still the th same thing but uh, we we got a lot of new stuff there for you, for everyone to just be like, okay, this is new. So how much of this new record? I mean, I, I feel like that's kind of the hard thing. And granted, you guys are on your third record, so it's a little bit easier for you to do this. But how much of the new record is going to make its way into this upcoming headlining run? I think half our set's going to be new songs, if I'm being honest. So yeah, 
So come out, have some fun. Uh, we're playing a lot of new songs. And uh, obviously, uh, we, you know, we're ending this uh, now. Uh, you guys are going to be doing this headlining run. I think it starts in October. Uh, you're going to be here in Grand Rapids. Uh, October 2nd, so uh, looking forward to the set. Maybe we can do another one of these in person and just bullshit about something else. Uh, Absolutely. But uh, what uh, what does the rest of the year hold for you? I'm assuming it's just lots of touring. Yeah, we're doing a self-help and a, a one-off show with the Dander member, which is super sick. And then we're doing our headliner um, at the end of uh, September all the way through October. It ends November 1st, so if any of you are listening, come out, have some fun. I promise you won't regret it and uh lastly where can everyone find you and or the band online uh wagewarband.com it's got everyone's socials everything so yeah wagewarband.com awesome well thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today and uh, again record by the time this comes out the record will be out please go get it it is really fucking good go support them and uh i think this is gonna probably be a my top album of the year all righty thank you so much i appreciate it so that was my conversation with Britain bond of wage war um, you know, something that was kind of interesting, you know, you were touching in the intro there about, you know, it's not, they're not reinventing the wheel with this record or anything like that. They're just kind of doing it better than most at this point, kind of firing on all cylinders. You know, something as I've been listening to this record more, and this is kind of like a shit thing I feel like to say, but I also think it shows, you know, I'm going to mention like these two or three bands and, and it, they're kind of the, the, the top of the mountain. But, you know, there's a song on here. And me against myself actually is a great example. Like I can't not hear that, and and I'm like, oh, this sounds like something Caleb would have wrote from Beartooth. Like it sounds like a Beartooth song off of the last record, Disease. Uh, there's another song where I was like, oh, this kind of sounds like an A Day to Remember song. Like this kind of has like Jeremy's like vocal cadences kind of on it, and you know the song structure and so forth. And you know I kind of was telling my wife that, and I kind of ruined those songs for her because she's like oh that's all i hear now is like these people there's a song like hurt and i i can't help but hear like a maddie mullins memphis mayfire kind of vocal pattern to that as well and you know that just kind of speaks to the the wide array of what i'm listening to but also if you're trying to be a heavy band that also has a foot in some pop sensibilities and is able to kind of a, appeal to a wider demographic or, or as you like to say be, kind of become that gateway band i think memphis mayfire <laughs> a day to remember and Beartooth are probably, I mean, two of those three are on tour, getting ready to tour it with each other in, in like arenas, basically. So if that's who I'm comparing you to, good fucking job. Congratulations. You have figured out how to do something. And it doesn't, and it doesn't knock what they're doing because I definitely think those are great songs. Like I, I fucking suck the dick of me against myself for a solid like two or three minutes and the whole record throughout the whole thing. So I'm not shitting on the record in any way, shape or form. I definitely love this record. I just, it, it's hard not to notice that it sounds like some of these other people. And that's fine because you know what? I think as you were saying, when you have your kill switch engages, your Lamb of Gods, your, your, your benchmark bands, inevitably there are going to be people who kind of take some of those things from those bands. But I think something that Wage War has done really well is they figured out a way to still incorporate potentially those elements and put it into their thing and kind of still make it their own. Totally. Like they still sound like wage war, you know, and I think that's, that's the, that's the big thing is that like people want to just trash a band that, and I don't really know how much trashing is really going on here. Like, let's be, let's be honest. Like, I think that this record's more or less been pretty well received, and anybody that doesn't think so is wrong, you know. But like, again, dude, I I don't I don't like you know me. You know I don't like hand out free passes at all. But like, I, this was a good record. Like, what what more do you want? <laughs> you know, like that's that's the question that I can never get answered honestly by people that. That, that just hate on stuff is that like did you like the song well yeah the songs are good but they're this and this and this well if if all of these all of these outside factors that have nothing to do with the band and their creative process is what's influencing like whether you like a record or not but you admit that the songs are good then you're just like you're playing some kind of weird mind game with yourself man you know and i, I and I, I can't figure out why like I can't figure out why people are that, and I think it's just because we live in the internet age, and I think people just, their opinion matters at the very least to them, and because they think it matters, it matters to all these other people. I, I don't know. Like, I don't have a leg to stand on on that, because, like, I'm a podcaster because all I do is just spout my opinion about stuff all day. But, you know, in having an opinion, 
I think I think sometimes a little bit of refinement needs to you know, like there's questions you have to ask yourself before you make a bold statement like oh they're just way too commercial now and it's like yeah but it isn't the sellout thing to just do whatever sells records yeah I mean you could do the opposite and do it as late I did and put out probably arguably one of your most aggressive records yeah. from straight to finish well yeah it's just like if you're if you're into heavy bands like and they just stay in that same genre that they've been playing for the past 10 years and they never that there's no variation like you're going to hate that too or if they go a little bit more mainstream like it's like you're holding it's like it's like you know if you apply for a better job and then you get that job and everybody hates you because you got a better job because you did what works better for you in a work in a work world that's not a bad thing but for some reason in music it's like the unforgivable sin all that aside, basically, uh, if you haven't kind of gathered, uh, we, we are big fans of this record. Um, we are big fans of this band. And I know the band right now is on tour with Like Moths to Flames, Polaris, and Dayseeker. Uh, that tour will wrap up on November 1st out in Florida uh, around their hometown of Ocala. And uh, I'm hoping to go see them. They are coming around here pretty soon. And uh, maybe get to talk to Chris from Like Moths again. Uh, if you haven't seen the news, they just uh, dropped a new single and announced a new label. Because uh, last time Chris was on, he announced that they were no longer signed uh, to a label anymore. So seems like the stars are in alignment to uh, maybe have Chris come back on the show and to uh, do another chat with him and, and kind of see what's going on with the guys. Speaking of keeping up and catching up, if you would like to keep up with Wage War, simple enough. You can find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Wage War. Uh, you can head over to wagewarband.com, keep up with everything going on with them. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with Britain, you can find him on Instagram at Britain Bond. And Twitter at Britain underscore Bond. And Dan will tell you where he can be found. Uh, I can be found on Facebook under Daniel Terry. I can be found on my other podcast, Discography Discussion at DiscussMetal.com. I can also be found on Twitter at DiscussMetalDan. So, I mean, I'm all over the place. And, uh, you know, just lately, Instagram at the Discography Discussion Instagram page. So, there's that. Your first uh, post on the gram, and, and you know, Shai Halud shares, uh, shares your post. So, I mean, that's rad. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, can't, can't pretend like I'm not super stoked about that. I mean, I'll have to teach you about Instagram stories and stuff like that, so uh, other bands potentially will share those and, and how to post links and so forth. But uh, speaking of all that, if you would like to follow us, you can find us simply enough at Bruce Speak Pod on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out our YouTube channel. We have some videos of some of the interviews we have done. Otherwise, it's just a, an, another format, another way for you to check out this podcast. Uh, you can check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Pod. Support us monetarily if you are so inclined. We have some interesting perks over there. Check out our show sponsor, The Bean Bastard, over at thebeanbastard.com. Facebook and Instagram at The Bean Bastard. If you would like to keep up with Metal Nexus, you can check out all their going-ons at metalnexus.net, Facebook at Metal Nexus, Instagram at metal.nexus, and Twitter at Metal underscore Nexus. And for the Brutally Speaking Podcast, I am John. And I am Dan. And we will talk to you all next time.